Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Good evening. So, um, so tonight at the moon wasn't going to rise until about 7.09 on one clock and 7.10 on another. And so we wouldn't see it over these trees until about 9 o'clock tonight. So make sure to look up when you're on the way out to see, because there aren't any leaves yet, so we should be able to see it through the trees. Once the trees uh, leaf, then it's really hard to see. We don't get a good sky view once that happens, but we should have a good view of tonight's. It's a worm moon, a super worm moon, called a worm moon just because it's the springtime and the worms are working in the soil, and that's all it means because the worms are coming out in springtime. But it's the last uh, big moon that we're going to see this year, so uh, remember to look at it. I don't know what it's different from looking at the regular moons, but there's something special about it. It's close to the Earth, and so it's super big. It's just big. So we've been talking about... Um, about practices, and what we did tonight is one of the practices that are that monastic people do, out and walk on a path. I think we might have even spoken about that already. That's different from the wandering, but uh, walking, walking a regular path, is an aspect of practice. But um, <clears throat> tonight I wanted to talk just briefly about a different one. And the world is so complicated right now and so difficult and so many difficult things happening. You know, when our places of sacred practice are so terribly abused, we had the awful thing in Pittsburgh with the synagogue earlier this year and then uh, in New Zealand, the, the mosque, the killings in the mosque, very difficult times not to mention all the other things that are going on everywhere. It's honest to goodness, you... I know people who don't read the newspaper and I'm beginning to think that maybe I won't read the newspaper for a while. But on the other hand, it is our practice to recognize that the duality exists in this world and that that same duality is in us. And although we... Uh, chant the precepts tonight and we receive the precepts in so doing, we still are in this world of duality and um, those same possibilities are in us actually. So, so it, um, we are not absent from uh, the potential, but we aim to do good in the world, to live well, to make every effort to live in enlightenment. But one of the great practices that I think uh, is present in all the world religions, and that is a celebration of the seasons. And tonight is the spring equinox. And so we have this time of celebrating this spring that, that comes, that is here before us. And Oh, what, what does the season, what does the season ask of us, or any season? What does this season ask? It's something to consider, something to think about. It has all kinds of implications. But most religions also have a, an annual liturgy as we also do in Zen Buddhism. I think that Americans have not so easily celebrated the year-long liturgy in Zen practice, and I don't exactly know why. I'm not sure. But that uh, annual liturgy, which follows a circle, which is our symbol, the symbol of the Enso, that follows the cycles of the year. Of course, the, that's not what the circle means, but the circle can mean that. that. That is our practice through the various expressions of nature. And um, so that cyclic, 
practice continues and the seasons deeply teach us. And so it is a very deep um, religious, spiritual, monastic practice of the, of the great seasons. And the springtime, for many people, it is a, a difficult time to come into spring or to be spring. Uh, many people have a hard time dealing with springtime, and yet here is this promise, this freshness, the plum tree, the branches are sitting outside the door. Please take some branches with you when you go home. I put them out there for you to, uh, to take, to enjoy the fragrance of those plum blossoms. The plum tree represents the Buddha. And so our plum tree out here, uh, outside of Gogawan, is deeply symbolic and very representative of Ryokansan's practice of, of being Buddha. And uh, so springtime is an opening, a celebration, an awareness of what's new, new potential, the earth coming alive after the long, sleeping, cold season of winter, and now spring. And Dogen reminds us, as we were talking about last Saturday, that um, spring um, doesn't become fall, and one season doesn't become the other. That spring is its own time. Spring is its own dharma position. Now today, it is spring. And here we are in the amazing unfurling of nature and all the bounty that it brings and all its promise for us. So, what is this season for? That is the question I wish you to take home tonight. What is this season for? Any season, of course, but this spring, now, we are in this dharma position of spring. What is this season for? It asks us to respond to what it's saying by way of its manifesting. And it's uh, very rare, I think, to have a super full moon on a spring equinox. I think it's extraordinarily rare. And the ceremony that we did tonight is typically practiced on the full moon. The full moon is the time of atonement. And full moon represents great awakening. And so there is the Bodhisattva ceremony, a ceremony of atonement, a ceremony to uh, awaken us to our practice, awaken us to a uh, right way to live. And so um, this is what we have this evening and a very uh, deep opportunity to um, take the quietude of it and um, really allow it to reside in the fiber of the body. What is this season for? So that's all. Just a short talk tonight. Um, feels long when we go out and walk around the path, do the path of the ancestors. Feels it's very, very nice to do, and the mosquitoes are not out yet. <laughs> <laughs> so, so it's quite nice. got very cold this winter, so maybe these mosquitoes will be a little bit abated, and not so much water. You know, we didn't have so much rain this spring, so perhaps the, uh, perhaps the um, mosquitoes will go somewhere else. <laughs> we don't wish their demise like the insects, of course we don't, but... Um, when I first came to Washington, we had no mosquitoes here. So it's uh, with climate change and the warming, 
We've seen more abundant mosquitoes, and last year we could hardly sit outside. So we'll see how this year goes.